So how do you say it? We're back. I, I feel bad. High point was easy, man. I feel bad for Jason Creel because <laughs> you murdered that guy's name the whole time we were at the Hype House in February. You called him like it was. It, it's like his last name was like a Louisiana seasoning or something you like bitch. Creole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could just tell him he was looking at you every time. Jason Creole. That's not his name. <laughs> Anyways, it's uh, call like you're calling somebody. Call. Call and you fax somebody. Call, call fax. fax. Yeah. Call fax. It looks like cold fax, and a lot yeah, of people yeah. say call. But if you ask the people that are from here, born here, it is call, call fax. fax. Call fax. How did you guys find this uh, plot of land? It's it's a uh, pretty cool how it worked out. Um, I I do bush hogging on the side, and this property before it was de- developed, before the, the neighbors built the house uh, in front of us. It was a 4.77 acre tract. They were okay. trying to sell it. Okay. And then uh, the people bought the 2.2 acres at the front. So this was sitting here and a guy from the coast bought it and was planning on building a house here, but he and his wife couldn't get along. So that never unfolded. Okay. So he used to come up here every month and mow. Well, I guess there was a time frame where he wasn't making it up here from Wilmington, North Carolina. And the grass got to be like, you know, four to five feet high, four to five feet high to the point where uh, the gentleman that lives next door was calling and complaining like, hey, you need to take care of your mess, man. There's like rodents and bugs and all kinds of stuff and snakes, you know, coming out of your field uh, into my backyard. So the gentleman that owned this property, you know, Googled, you know, companies and and high point and uh, I popped up. He called. He's like, hey, I got this lot, and, uh, you know, can you can you service it for me once a month? And Han and I at the time were actively looking for property, but we were we had a minimum set at five acres. I didn't want anything less than five. So that's why this property never came up on the radar because it's only uh, 2.6 acres, 2.54. So I, I never knew about it. I knew it was for sale, but never entertained the idea. And the day I came out here, I think it was August of 20... 19 i think was the first time i set foot on the property uh came out here got it all bush hogged and uh, it was probably maybe a month or two after that to where i got it to where i could run my mowers on it and give a finished cut instead of a rough bush hog cut and when i was finally able to to run the the zk over it and had it all like clean cut i stopped on the back side of the property one day and i kind of just had like a little come to jesus me with myself and i was like this is a really, it's a really pretty place. You know, it was, um, it, it was off the roadway. There was no easements running through it and there was no issues with it or nothing. And I just, I started visioning things, you know, I could put my building here. I could build here, blah, 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 blah. And brought Han out here and she fell in love with it like instantly. And I think it was probably a few weeks after that, we, we spoke to the realtor and after, I don't know, three months of service in it, we ended up buying it. So that's that's how the story unfolded. So it, it all came from a complaint from the neighbor. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> Who man. we've actually befriended. He's like a super cool guy. Yeah. At what point, Mitchell, did – I think Fullerton might have had a role of encouraging you, but at what point did you're like, I'm going to do YouTube and I'm going to document this because you started that before this, I believe, and, and this whole thing, you can go ahead and just – pop your popcorn and binge watch the whole development of this yeah uh, how did all that come tell us that story i had thought about doing youtube once or twice and i kept shutting myself down because i was so invested into the instagram platform and let's face it like i was not watching youtube videos like especially like when it comes to the green industry like i didn't watch nobody and that's why i didn't know a lot of the guys from the youtube scene but um and then now I was watching like car vloggers. With, yeah, yeah, I was watching. Uh, yeah, my neighbor's car that's in here. Uh, I was watching uh, you know, like supercar videos and stuff like that. But um, I got to thinking about it, and then Hannah was like, "Hey, you know, why don't you do this, do that, try that, try that?" And I had gotten to a point where I was finally more comfortable in front of the camera because I used to not be. You know, I, I can put my uniform on every day and go face the the worst of the worst. But you put a camera on me. I'm the biggest chicken crap, you know, and I, I would get nervous and, you know, I, I couldn't do it. Like I couldn't talk in front of people, like a group of people. So it, it took building up that confidence in front of the camera on Instagram to where I finally felt comfortable 
putting the camera on me for YouTube. But I was so hung on Instagram and the just the real quick, you know, scrolling aspect. Look at a picture or look at a really short video and keep moving. That's all I cared about. That's all I had time for. Um, you know, I'm like, I don't have time for a 10, 15, 20 minute video. You know, I found time to watch a supercar video on that. But uh, <laughs> but for YouTube, um, I did have a conversation with, with Brian Fullerton. And he was like, man, he's like, if you've got this confidence to do that, da, 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 da. You know, if, if you don't, if you have no problems with, with hitting record, then, you know, the content that you would put on Instagram, just put it on YouTube. So I was having the, the plans for this shop coming up and Brian was like, hey, you know, people want to see that stuff. You know, it's, it's a hot topic on YouTube. Um, you know, why don't you document the whole process? So I got to thinking about it. And then when I decided to do it, I was like, it would be cool for me to have later. I don't give a crap if it only gets one view and I'm the guy watching it. You know, I can go back later and watch these videos and see how it all started. So that got me interested. Um, I was more comfortable in front of the camera. And, you know, a lot of the guys listening and the, and the girls listening right now and that'll be watching, you know, your video, we've met them, you know. So I know, I know now on the other side of these speakers or whatever – you know, sits Lamont or sits Casey or other guys that, you know, you and I know, Paul. So I'm more comfortable with it now that I know the people watching and listening to me, listening to me are people I know. Um, so it's, it's not a, you know, a big angry beast anymore. So that's, that's how I kind of got into it. Hannah and, and, and Brian motivated me to do the YouTube and it's been a lot of fun. Like I've met a whole other group of people that exist because there's people on YouTube or that watch YouTube videos that don't tune into Instagram so I have conversations with people on the YouTube platform that I've never met before in my life, you know. Um, so it's it's been a lot of fun. Plus, it's something new. Um, I do, I've do i been doing Instagram for five or six years, and that was kind of on autopilot. You know, it wasn't new or nothing. It wasn't a challenge anymore. YouTube is a whole other world, you know, having the time to film and edit and all that stuff. So I really enjoyed it. It's been right at a year since I started my channel. Has anybody locally ever spotted you and been like, hey, man, I, I seen you on YouTube building the shop or anyone ever recognize you? Yeah, I got stopped. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not famous <laughs> and by any means, by, by any means. Uh, but I was in uh, there's a little local restaurant, Dario, a little burger joint. And I was at burger uh, burger joint. I was at Dario um, a week or two ago with Hannah eating lunch. And a gentleman walked up and he was like, are you Mitchell? And then I'm like. Yeah, but I also drive a truck that has my name yeah. on the side, you know, and stuff like that. So uh, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm Mitchell. He's like, well, yeah, I watch you on YouTube and Instagram. I've been following you for a while. And I'm, I had kind of had that moment like, that's pretty cool, you know. You know, so it, it's very, very, very rare. Um, but it, it does happen. What was your experience at the Hype House being around other guys that are full throttle on, you know, content, posting social media, just being around folks that are all in? It uh it was, it was kind of life changing because, for Instagram like I get it you know I'm I'm I've been on it for a while I've got a healthy following I know all about Instagram but the YouTube like I said the YouTube scene was completely new to me, but to actually watch, you know Sean Spencer Brian Fullerton and yourself and uh, these other guys and and Jason to watch them actually and Blake I don't want to leave anybody out you know that was. You got to come the content. whole week next yeah. time, man. You're yeah. in and out. But to actually watch these guys, I'm going to back up and bump because I had a mindset going down there. I was like, you know, I'm going to take my camera. I'm going to record. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. What did I do? None of it. Because I literally sat back in awe and was watching like real content creators and how they create content for their YouTube channel, you know, because they're legitimate like producers. Yeah. And, you know, seeing, you know, uh, just for example, like Blake grab his camera and, and, and pull you aside and want to talk to you or pull Josh Sutton aside or Andy Mulder or whatever and just pull him aside and interview him. See, I've, I've never done that. Like, I've never interviewed people. Like, I can have a conversation with Casey or Lamont, you know, all day long. But to have the mindset to turn a camera on and to record it, I never thought that way. So... I never even made a video for my YouTube channel for the Hype House because the stuff I recorded, I'll be honest, was junk. 
because I, I didn't record enough to make a story because I got so caught up in watching everybody around me. But my biggest takeaway from being at the Hype House was what to do if I'm ever presented with that opportunity again, if I'm in that situation again, and how I can create content and how I can be a producer for my own channel. Um, it's easy when I'm here, you know, to record me standing over there at the workbench with a piece of equipment or turn the camera on me while I'm mowing, but interacting with a human being mm -hmm. and creating content with, you know, these guys or somebody else, which I still kind of haven't done yet. But if I'm in that environment again, I will know how to carry myself because of the, of what I've saw. And it was, it was impressive, you know, and you said, what did I take from it? Like, it was just impressive to watch like true producers and content creators, you know, create the stuff that they were creating. And I know we all have haters and there's everybody that talks crap, you know what I'm saying? Like, Penis gallery. but, uh, yeah, but you know, and, and people will that? talk crap about oh. certain guys or whatever. Um, but to, to get to know some of these guys, you know, off camera yeah. and to see who they are to get to, you know, to get, again, to get to know them. It's amazing to see them at work and in their environment, you know, so I have a newfound respect for a lot of the guys there, you know, and they make it look so easy. I was behind the scenes of the production, the movie, if you will, of your truck Fullerton filmed your, did like a show and tell with your truck. And I was just watching him do it and then did the drone and you're all driving out all slow around the Island and, Thing to that nature, and then when you watch it on YouTube, it looks so effortless and like smooth, but it, it, it's uh skillful and it's it's calculated and it's talent. It's impressive. You know, you know what I'm talking about that movie. That little yeah, yeah, it was yeah, it was truck great movie. I I uh, I lack their editorial skills, so you know, one of the things when I started my channel, I was like, listen, it's going to be basic editing, none of that cinematic stuff. For one, I don't know how to do it. Um, and two, I want to spend the least amount of time as possible in front of my computer editing as possible. Like I just, I want it to be raw. I want it to be me. I don't do takes. Like if, if I screw up and say something wrong, it's going to be on the camera. You know, I mean, I joked just, just a minute or a little bit ago when I was recording a story for Instagram, <laughs> like, like before the podcast. Yeah, yeah, right before we started the podcast, I'm recording an Instagram story to put. And uh, instead of saying Carolina boys, I said Carolina balls. Uh, but uh, the <laughs> we lost. It. I would have posted it. I would have posted it. But the only reason I didn't is because I recorded it in a dang time lapse. Yeah. <laughs> so over two. Yeah, but <laughs> but that's me, you know. And I want people to always know that that's me, you know. And and the guy on camera is a guy that they would you know meet anywhere. Right. So yeah, that's good. Lamont, man, I, I want to, as the host, I feel like it's a, a pizza a pie chart. I want it to be like 25, 25, 25. So we got to we gotta get you some love, man. I know you traveled all the way out here. Uh, How has Dave Ramsey's uh, program and podcast influenced uh, your life? Well, like I said before, you know, as, as I told you in the last podcast, but, you know, everybody don't listen to everyone. But my thing is, you know, I want to be financially successful. Money is money's not everything, but as you, how I look at it, you can't do nothing without money. You can't feed the homeless. You can't feed the hunger. You can't. You can't. Um, you cannot um, get, give. Lamont, well, get your mic nice, sorry, like sorry. you're kissing your wife. Sorry, about making that. out with her. There you go. Well, it might be. Well, I'm a, I'm a deep. <laughs> <laughs> deep, oh, in no. your, deep in your voice a little bit. How about this, Mitch? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, there we go. But yeah, it just I just sit back and think because you know you can't do anything if you're financially stressed. You know you can't take care of things. You know I couldn't donate a hundred thousand dollars to a charity. You know making ten dollars an hour. You know it's it's you know and like I said I'm not knocking nobody that's like that. But for me personally, you know I'm trying to get on Andy Motors level. You know <laughs> you know because I mean he's you know he's he's a genius with it. You know debt free killing yes. it. Yeah and you know. How he's his mortgage is paid off. He's a hundred percent. I interviewed him uh, in the swimming pool with you, right? Oh yeah, we we're sitting yeah. out there. Uh, that was fun, man. Yeah, that was that was a good interview. Yeah, and it it was. I liked it a lot. And that's just that's just a thing of mine, you know. Like you know, Mitchell. You know, Mitchell was very successful. You know, not just, not just because the equipment he's got and the house and the, the building and the truck and everything. It's just that his mindset is successful. You know, my wife asks me all the time. She says, "If I got a question." She'd be like, 
what would Mitchell say? I'm like, I'm not calling her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not calling her. <laughs> she will. She's like, call Mitchell. No, no, because I already know what the answer's going to be. And a whole lot of times it's what you need to hear. Yep. Even though you don't want to hear it. Um, I can be rough around the edges. But I tell it like it is, man. That's how I would want to hear it. You know, don't sugarcoat crap for me, man. Tell That's it like it point. is. Yeah. You know? And, and the truth hurts sometimes. He yeah. definitely does not sugarcoat anything. <laughs> no, because I asked him, I asked him, uh, my fact was three weeks ago, I asked him, I want to purchase a set of twills for my Dixie chopper. He's like, do you really need them? I was like, no, nah, so I won't, not a need. He was like, well, won't you buy what you need to make more revenue come in? Then you may wait to the end of the season or the first of the year and then buy those twills. And I was like, that makes teetotal sense. You're happier too, aren't you? I am. Because if I bought them, you know. I'm you glad know. I didn't buy his. Yeah. I thought about it. <laughs> He's like, why do you need them? I'm like, dang it. But at the time, I was mowing some pretty rough properties. And I was seriously thinking about buying them. But I finally had to break down and just buy a set of airs for the ZK. I'm going to eventually get a set, though, but like I said, it wasn't a priority at that time, Mm-mm. you know. And now that I think about it, you know, I actually, instead of buying those twists, I'm going to buy me another Echo 2620 because, you know, since I got that part-time helper, if he's got one weed eater and I finish mowing, he's not finished trimming, I'm going to do just stand there and look at him. I can grab the other trimmer, you know, because all I had was one trimmer. I can just go, you know, meet, meet on the side. We meet in the middle. So... Appreciate that, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm trying to get on that uh, debt free because I it just like I t- it's just less stress, man. I don't, I don't care who it is, me, him, Casey, whatever, my mama, whatever. You know, it just to me it's is um it's less stressful. I mean, that's the way I can put it. Liberating. Yeah. So it's definitely nice when you pay off something. That's yeah. for sure. Like I said before, you know, what if we were to have a three month drought? See, we got not a drop of rain at all. If you can't mow, if like like for the people who just straight mow, for instance, if you just straight mow, if you can't mow a yard for three months because due to a severe drought, you'll have to go out and get a job to to support. Because if you got, like I said, boat payments, car payments, whatever, then payments are still gonna come regardless. Because if you don't, the snatch man's gonna roll up. Nobody <laughs> won't see the, the nobody won't see that. Man. Nobody won't see that. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that black truck, that little T bar on the back. <laughs> snatch truck. <laughs> snatch man. That's what we call them, Snatch Man. They're <laughs> because, called repos. <laughs> hey, the, 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 the abbreviated version of the Snatch Man. <laughs> because the reason why I say this is because I, I, I got a buddy that works at a facility around here, and he said the truck was riding through the parking lot. You know, the repo man riding through the parking lot trying to find somebody. Whether they was on short hours or just had too much overhead done the thing. And he said that when somebody come in and told people that the repo man was running around to the parking lot, about forty people ran to the ran outside and had the little keyless thing was doing this <laughs> to see to see to see if their car was still out there. Wow! Because you know he don't have to tell he's coming. You know he don't have to tell he's well, coming. They don't tell you, but you should still know if your car's up for repo or not. It well it depends. I guess you know it, it's not supposed to be a surprise. True, I know, but you mentally know that hey, I'm. Yeah. Four, I'm four months behind I'm, I'm or this, I'm current. I'm this delinquent. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, last year they made it a rule to where, due, due to the pandemic, nobody could get kicked out of their homes. Cars were being repoed. I mean, none of that was going on. So, so you these guys went, are out trying to make up that money. Yeah. <laughs> so you could have went out all the last year if you made poor choices to do so. So you could went from March of last year, probably to the end of this year, eight nine months behind. Ain't nothing. By law at the time that he could have done to you. But this was pre pandemic. You know, people people going outside doing that and I was like <laughs> <laughs> Hey was like, you made your payments on time, you know, you know you won't have to worry about that. You give us a lot of good sound bites on the show, Lamont. The snatch man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've always called him. You know, I don't live as you know, I live more rural than than, than these two. You know, I grew up on a dirt road, man. So I live on a dirt road. What are you talking about? I got a dirt driveway. <laughs> I got a well, I got a gravel driveway now, so <laughs> but yeah, but you know, it's but just you definitely you definitely live up in the Yeah, I live in the sticks. In the country. In the country. I do for real. We got a lot of uh young guys, not necessarily in age, but they're young in business that have yep. been uh thankfully the algorithm in podcasting world when they type in lawn care into the whether it's Spotify or Apple Podcasts. 
thankfully the algorithm has been shooting for 10 and me and Caleb Allman's got a podcast now kid, uh, kid, con- kid contractor yeah, right. LCR media Naylor. So got, guys are starting to listen to our show that are in year one or, or maybe they're not even in year one. They're thinking about it. It's so cool to hear these stories, uh, but something that um, we all attend is the GIE plus expo. So I want to hear your guys's um, plan for the 2021 GIE plus expo, as well as what would you say to somebody who's maybe just here in, I had a, a guy the other day. Is I'm thinking about going to that GIC. <laughs> I was like, Ooh, wow. the jick. <laughs> I was like, all right, it's GIE. But uh, I mean, we we ne- there was a time when we never knew what it was. So uh, give us your plans for GIE, and then maybe a little uh, sales pitch. I, I mean, I'm I'm a full believer in GIE, but maybe if you uh, want, I'm gonna go last. Okay, give g- give a recruitment of of why um, first. folks should oh. consider youngest. Whatever. Um, I mean, that is true. It is. Okay, whatever. Go on, rookie. Um, I, have, <laughs> I have not decided on this year net yet. Um, I, I would like to go. Uh, it's a little little bit of a trip, but um, I definitely recommend going. It's definitely an eye-opener to see what all kinds of equipment is out there and is available and is coming. Uh, I think quite a few people are doing it more for the networking, which is good. It's You can never have too small of a network. Network is huge, especially in this day and age era, and especially in our industry. And I think it's like I said on um, Naylor's podcast when he came down that six years ago, this wasn't around. Our industry, it was not this, it was not this live. But now we're all throwing ourselves out there. We're all out there. We're all here to talk to each other. And I mean, it was kind of funny how we mentioned Naaman earlier. And that's where I actually met him in person for the first time, talked to him. I, I kid you not, his ears must have been burning because he texted me. Oh, wow. Me too. <laughs> he ben, me. ben from uh, Alabama. Alabama, yeah. But, um, I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of friends to be made. Um, but mostly for the equipment and for the friendships. I mean, you're not going to get anything else. And then those mowers that you may dream about buying – they guarantee you they're up there, and if you're thinking about buying one and you're not quite sure, I'd wait till GIE and then go ride anything and everything in the industry and then make your decision because you can probably make it pretty quick once you get up there. I know I did. Well, I guess I'm the next. So, uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend going to GIE. Speaking of mowers, he was uh, speaking about, you know, which mower that you might buy. That's probably every mower brand up and mowers we've never even heard of. It may not be in our area. Like, um, I, I think I was on Brown's podcast. I spoke a bad boy. I mean, um, Big Dog. Nobody knew what Big Dog was in my in our area. Well, nobody knew what Big Dog was. Maybe like in bigger towns, then you go to GIA and there's big there's Big Dog. Well, then there's a brand of most called Bradley. Nobody heard it, hardly ever heard of them. But Quick Cuts Lawn Care off of YouTube in uh, Georgia, Conyers, Georgia. That's all he runs is Bradley Moors. The price point with Bradley is that you know you can get. To, you know, three mowers of them for the price of, of a ZK61, which is nothing wrong with a ZK61. But their prices started like $3,500 for, for a 48 inch uh, stand up. But as far as going to GIE, like if you've never been, I suggest anybody go. I don't care if you're in spraying, hardscape, mowing, mulching, every piece of equipment that, that, that you can imagine is there. I mean, they have excavators, you know, bobcats. You know, and I think two weeks prior to GIE is actually like the landscaper, landscape contractors event up there that actually do like the big earth moving equipment, like D nine bulldozers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, see, I didn't know that. Like Case and John Deere and Bobcat, they bring all their big stuff up there. And as far as going to GIE, uh, we always I'm, I'm, I always go a day early. I know it starts at three o'clock on Wednesday. I always arrive Tuesday. See what festivities are going on. Yeah, because somebody likes to have a get together at some whiskey river. I some think. whiskey river. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's my turn, I'll talk. No, you can go. <laughs> you don't. All right. So GIE. This will be my should be my fifth year going, but I think we all know we got robbed last year. So uh, this will be my fourth year attending, and for me. Pretty much the only reason I attend now is for two reason, two reasons. The social aspect, I want to see all the people that I've, you know, come to know and love in our, in our industry. Um, and two, brand partnerships. So that's pretty much the only reason why I go. Um, 
I don't want to sound wrong, but like I don't care about the equipment or none of that stuff. Like I just, I, I'm there for the moment and and getting to see friends and meet new friends. It's a one time of the year, and pretty much the only time of the year where so many of us get together and just let loose and have a good time and go to Four Street Live at, at, in the evenings, you know, after the show, and then go to the GIE rally that that Naylor started years ago. So. That is the most important aspect of it for me is the friendships that you that you gain from being there. Um, I just did a video on my YouTube channel about this of, of reasons why you should attend. Okay, and one of the things I hit on was if you've got, you know, questions about your business or you just need that little nudge to get to the next step. Um, Paul, you know this well that besides the equipment and demos and social aspect of it they have seminars all day long every day that you can invest in to better your business things that you know tools that you can use not necessarily like physical tools but you know educational tools or software or whatever to make your business better and to give you that confidence to take it to the next level um you know how you can use social media to build your company so there's so many different angles that you can attack that ex- expo from to leave there on Friday if you attend the whole show, to leave there a more confident entrepreneur, if that makes any sense. Um, you know, if you need new equipment for your fleet, it's the place to go. If you're looking to meet new people in the industry, it's the place to go. If you're looking to, to get away for a few days and, and have a blast and um, let loose, it's the place to go. If you're looking for you know, new ways to run or manage your, your crew or your business, it's the place to go. Um, any and all of the, the trend-setting equipment that's coming out, new stuff, I compare the GIE to if, and this was on my, my video, but anybody that's familiar with the automotive world, um, the GIE is the equivalent to the SEMA show or the Geneva Auto Show in Europe or the Goodwood Festival in Europe. Like, um, it's the end all be all for the green industry and the hardscape industry. The newest, biggest, baddest, whatever that's coming out for that year will be there and you can get your hands on it. I don't know anywhere, anywhere else you can do that in the world. Um, yeah, there's little shows here and there across the country but not to the level that the, that the expo is. Um, so like I challenge people to find the time in your schedule, Casey, to attend, <laughs> to, to, Knew that was coming. to find the time in your schedule. If you've never been, I promise you, you would love it and you would take something away from it. Even if you don't get to where you go every year, um, it will benefit you to go. And it's funny, the first time I ever met Lamont, like I think in person, was at the show in Louisville. Like we're 30, 45 minutes from each other here, but the first time I ever physically met the dude was in Louisville, Kentucky. You snuck up behind me and put your camera on me like a creeper, but it was funny. So um, <laughs> I think that I was think the I first year I went. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's it's an awesome show, man. And I, Paul, I met you know I met you there. Yeah. Um, I remember you were doing your jobber interview. Yeah. In so, the, like basketball arena thing. Yeah. I met you in twenty because you were there in twenty seventeen. Oh too. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Twenty seventeen was my first year. Yeah. But I, you know, I'm still a nobody. But I, nobody so knew. You, I was nothing on so Instagram you then. Um, you know, I didn't have the I didn't have the social media following in twenty seventeen that I have now. Um, but I met you in twenty seventeen along with a bunch of other guys. Um, you know, so that's where I've got to meet uh, so many people. So, um, and if you want to save fifty percent on GI, you use code Paul. Oh, <laughs> All right, go oh. ahead, give your code. Come on, give your code. Uh, it's Paul or MLC fifty. Yeah, MLC yeah. fifty. And uh, um, the uh, hotel uh, reservations. Get those now. You know, get it in July, August. If you wait till October, you're going to be at the Red Roof Inn. You might get screwed. Yeah. Or you're going to be Just in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to be across the river in you're Indiana. The river, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So call the hotel. They don't even charge your card until you get there. And you just, you know, put in your Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. Um, at least stay for two of those nights, if not all three of those nights, and, and get uh, get signed up. And uh, you Don't know, stay with Mitchell in a hotel room. He'll freeze your butt out. Well, you know, that happened to me. You know, I got put in Indiana. The night I arrived to GIE 18, 
I got that late, and the AC in my room was not working. And they said that y'all are listening. Uh, if you're coming to the GIE Expo and you happen to come in on Tuesday evening, um, I have not made the reservations yet, but I'm going to be doing it Monday. But at Merle's Whiskey Kitchen in Louisville downtown, it's near the what's that? Car- the Cardinal Stadium or something? The, the Cardinal Stadium, Louisville um, Cardinals. Look, KF, anyways, KFC Center. KFC Center. That's it. Okay. Yeah, there's a big Cardinal on it. That's what I was going for. Yeah, it's, it's Louisville. It's right near the KFC Center, and uh, it's Merle's Whiskey Kitchen. Uh, if you're not a member of the Road to GIE group on Facebook, uh, definitely check it out. Uh, we'll get you in. Um, send an invite, and we'll, we'll accept you. But uh, it's going to be Tuesday night. Uh, from 7 till 10 and it's pretty much just a meet and greet um, you know casual um, there'll be some heavy hors d'oeuvres and uh, just you know meet people have fun for a few hours and uh, it's just kind of a pre-show little get together I started in 2018 there was you know maybe 10 15 and in 2019 there was like 30 or 40 so uh, I'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping it doesn't turn into like a Tuesday night GIE rally uh, but I can kind of see where Naylor went with this thing but um, We'd love to see y'all there again Tuesday night, Merle's Whiskey Kitchen. Yeah, and I would recommend if you can schedule it now, get in, you know, late Tuesday afternoon, mm-hmm. check into your hotel, come on out to that Tuesday evening. Uh, then you got Wednesday morning, you can relax a little bit and hit the showroom floor early afternoon. It opens up and, you know, kind of do the GIE uh, Wednesday afternoon, evening. Four Street Live's usually popping on. Didn't they open it up to everybody on Wednesday mornings now? No. Mm-mm. No? Wednesday afternoon. Well, yeah, Wednesday afternoon it, it opens up. Okay. And then Thursday's the Thursday's the long day. That That's all day, in, indoor, outdoor. Um, and then actually Friday morning, uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, they're giving us, the us Naylor's the pioneer behind all this, but <laughs> the main ballroom floor, Caleb Allman, Naylor, and myself are going to be interviewing um, Sean and Savannah Spencer, Alan Hain, uh, Jason Crail. Hey, there you go. <laughs> hey, got it right. Uh, he, he had to hesitate there for a I second for people that were uh, Creole. That can't Creole. quite see Creole. on the camera or on audio. He, he then, had to pause. And then um, Corey Ballard is going to be there, and that's going to be on the main ballroom floor on Friday morning, and it's free if you have your ticket to get to GIE. Um, so it was really cool because – Naylor was actually sharing this on the podcast last night. GIE contacted Naylor and said, hey, we see what's going on. It's really special. We want to support what you guys are doing, but we don't want to screw it up. And I thought that was so cool. And he asked Naylor, it's like, how, how can we do this without getting – we don't want to get in the way, but we want to boost and, and promote what you guys got going on. And so, you know, Naylor's like gave him some ideas, and it's like, yes, yes, yes. And, and so they're giving us the main ballroom floor – that's to cool. um to interview those guys that's Friday those, morning. Those people have really, I think they've really stepped up now that they've seen what happens up there. Because I mean, it was like not a not a local guy to us, but state guy to us. He got up there and his reservations were screwed all up for his hotel. And the lady from GIE reached out to him and said, "Hey, here, it's fixed. Take it, go." Cool. And I think he ended up staying like for free at a few different hotels each night, but. He ended up getting it fixed because they reached out and they're like, hey, we don't want none of this. <laughs> yeah, and then Friday afternoon, usually, you know, you depart back, whether you're flying or driving. Most most guys, you know, get out of town about noon, one, or two, and, and uh, get back by Friday evening. So uh, I'd, I'd highly recommend uh, going to GIE. Definitely. Well, guys, uh, we'll close out with you sharing how people can connect with you on um, Instagram or, or YouTube or whatever you got going on. Go ahead and, and let people know where they can connect with you. Snatch, what's it called, Lamont? The Snatch, Snatch Man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I have some property management LSC on um, Instagram, and I have some property management LSC on YouTube. I only got a couple of videos, but I'm about to get back, start doing more here recently. Uh, Turner's Yards and Mower 2, and that is yards with a Z and mower, as in the equipment we use, and the number two on Instagram. And I've got a Facebook page with the same thing, or you can hit me on Facebook at Casey Turner. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. It's all the same. At Mitchell's Lawn Care LLC. Cool. Look me up. Cool. Well, thanks, Mitchell, for lunch and, and hosting us uh, here at the shop. Casey, yes, thanks sir. for coming out. Lamont, thanks for coming out. I Thank appreciate you. you guys making this easy for me because setting up and tearing this down at, at three or four different spots, it's so much easier to, to set up shop and especially in a nice shop like this, so oh, yeah. yeah, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad y'all could come. I'm glad we had a space where we could uh, where I could host you. Cool. Hope you'll come back again, man. <laughs>
Yeah, absolutely. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a East Coast gathering sometime. Yeah. Yeah, so. that that'd be really cool, and and we'll do uh we're gonna do one in Florida, February five, twenty twenty two. I'll be there. Uh, the hype house. Uh, I'll be in the hype house this year. Somehow, some way. Yeah, I'm we'll get, get you. In. We'll get we'll get you in, man. Bring the bring the. Uh, they, I was showing him a picture of it. It's it's legit. What we'll the invite <laughs> snatch, man? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I can get them shirts made. <laughs> Jesus. Type house snatch, man. February 5, 2022, though, we are going to do a meetup in Florida. Same same spot as last last year. So those hot girls were I, – I fell in a ditch. I don't know if I even told you the whole story. <laughs> there are these two hot girls, and uh, I don't know if you were paying attention, but they went jogging by, and I'm sitting there like – anyway. No, no, you – I was putting more together, <laughs> yeah. and then you showed up all freaking. You left clean oh. and put together, and then you showed up back up to help me put the more together, covered in mud. Yeah, because I was. Uh, Tora was very kind to send us two of the battery powered mowers, right. but they weren't fully installed. They sent them to Alan Hain in a box, basically, and we take them out of the box. And and you, what was wrong with it? This, the, well, nothing was really wrong with them. It's just they needed the to be assembled. They didn't need to be assembled, and they weren't at all. I mean, they were like straight up. In a cardboard box. Yeah, and so we wanted to honor Toro for sending us, you know, these are like $1,800 mowers, I think. Yeah, they're not cheap. And uh, they're heavy, too. So we're going to give them away at the event, and uh, we kind of, like, waited to the last minute. So now folks are Wait leaving. And- <laughs> we, d- we didn't know that they were this so far from being assembled. We, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we're, I feel time pressure from Brittany Almonds, like, hey, can you guys go get the mowers, you know? And I'm like, yeah, we'll be right back. And so I had to go to the bathroom then. So now I'm like, all right, I got to get to Mitchell. So I start running as fast as I can. And there's two f- ladies. They were beautiful. Yeah, they were. F- they are pretty. Yes. And they're like I walking by. And uh, <laughs> and there's a ditch. And I, I guess I tried to like jump over the ditch and kind of impress them a little bit. I didn't make it. I landed <laughs> right in that ditch, man. <laughs> These two girls were like looking like at one me. Of those like, you had on shoes like them. These they, are the shoes. You, they were like. Pearly, pearly white Adidas, and yeah. they came back covered. You're like mud. one of those kids that's out by the creek in the country <laughs> that thinks he can make it over, and he just face plants into the other side of the I creek. I landed bank. right. I really wasn't even close. And Mitchell's just like, "What happened to you?" You know. And then the girls walk by, and I'm like, "Ah, it makes sense oh, now." Oh man, <laughs> so, Paul, I've enjoyed being here, man. I'm glad. Oh, yeah. to, I'm glad we could do this. Yes, sir. All right, thanks for listening, guys, and we'll uh, kick it back to my, Mr. Producer back in the ATL. Thanks, Mitchell. Thanks, Casey. Thanks, Lamont. Thank you.